Welcome adventurers. Today we're going to turn some plastic card, Centra, aka expanded polystyrene, into this. I'm also going to use a few other things, some 3D printed bits, some plastic junk and whatnot. This is Centra, expanded PVC. It comes in multiple thicknesses. I bought 3mm, 6mm, and 12mm to build with and experiment with. I'll put the links in the description so that you uh, can get some for yourself if you'd like. Now it cuts really well, uh, two to three steady cuts and you get a nice clean edge. Here I'm cutting walls, uh, two and a half inches tall for future reference, but I wanted to take a piece and start experimenting to see how it takes texture and it does exceedingly well at taking texture. Just make sure you take your time, you can see where I didn't and it'll cause some imperfections in it. Now you could keep the imperfections obviously because that could be your average a random damaged brick or something. Now I tried various types of glue. Model cement because it melts plastic. PVC cement because this is PVC and neither of those worked that well. But what did work like a charm? Good old super glue. It held like I put nails in it. It was great. Uh, it doesn't take much and once they're together you're likely to damage the pieces, prying them apart or cutting them apart. So know that you want to be very precise with your placement and usage of super glue when you're putting things together with Centra. You obviously don't want to spend a lot of time and then damage it in the process. But yes, very tough. Uh, it would stand up to a lot of obvious tabletop gameplay and wargaming gameplay, as well as being transferred from your house to the game store, from game store to your buddy's place and all the things. Uh, not that you should be throwing it around like I am, but I'm trying to prove a point. It, it's tough. It is, it is so tough, and it's waterproof, and it takes paint. I mean, I'm very much considering that this becoming a standard building material for me as opposed to foam core and cardboard. So here's a 12 mil piece that I'm going to use as the base. It's thick, it's heavy, it doesn't warp, and I laid out a literal floor plan on it. And so here are the measurements. It is ten and a quarter or ten point seven five inches by six and a half. The front wall is again ten point seven five. The rest is four point two five by five and a half for the add-on office that's gonna be on this. Now make sure, unlike I did here, to keep your thumb out of the way when you're tracing in your patterns here. Otherwise, you just put your thumb pattern into your wall. But as I said, this stuff takes texture so well. And all this is is a cheap uh, sculpting tool from Michaels. And there you lay out really good looking bricks. And I wanted the structure to look like an auto zone or something, so that's why I did that for this first level. Now this is a matte cutting tool. It's a 45 degree matte cutting tool. To cut Centra with it, you want to take multiple shallow passes. Otherwise it tends to track off course. I practiced a lot to make sure that I could get it right and then you get perfect 45 degree angles. Now I didn't need to do it for this because I intended to from the start put uh, L channel on the corners to make it look like reinforced metal was making the structure but I wanted to show it works. I also designed doors. Reinforced heavy duty doors for well this is a gun shop and a chop shop for souping up your gangs hot rods and things for like a cyberpunk or a necromunder anything like that kill team i wanted something that was going to look tough from the outside and therefore control access so not just anybody walks in because you know these guys got guns so it'd be silly to do so but they want to make sure just nobody walks in off the street without being allowed in now here's that polystyrene l channel from plastruct Cut it, a dab of super glue, and it holds, again, like nails are in it. I also made a framed I-beam section for the reinforced first floor because I do know a little bit about construction and know that they use I-beams for reinforcing so that the walls have some stability as well as the roof. Now, this office is an add-on after the fact uh in the overall history of the construction of the building so i use more of the centra and some thin plastic strips i cut out for the ribbing and of course i laid out the base floor plan for the upper floor now i waste my time 
by cutting out that stairwell because I didn't need to. I would never had the intention of taking the second floor off the building, but you could make it so that these are two separate structures. I didn't. I also forgot to put texture in to the whole upper floor. So after the fact, I had to go and do that, which you'll see here in a moment. Right now I'm putting in keying posts so that way the roof aligns with the building. Again, with how structurally sound the Sentra is, it doesn't warp or bend, so it makes it very nice for doing this sort of thing. Now, I forgot to cut in my garage door. I should have done that first. I thought about it at the beginning, and then, in my excitement to use the material, I didn't. What you don't see there is when I use the exacto knife to also cut along the lower connection point because the super glue was again very strong more l channel to frame out the garage door and now to actually make one chipboard sandwiched between two pieces of corrugated paper pretty straightforward and then i intentionally damage it because if you've seen old roll-up garage doors in movies and in your neighborhood maybe they're usually dented and dinged up this is a tube that a micro tool came in for a surgical kit. Wrap some corrugated card around it. And now it's the upper part of the garage door with the cap sticking out because it looks like the gear mechanisms that would control it. This is some very thin cork. I think it's three mil. I got a big roll of it for I don't know, a few bucks at Hobby Lobby several months ago. First time I'm really using it for anything because I wanted to make asphalt. I intentionally damage it because old asphalt has cracks and tears in it and holes. I mean, they're potholes. So I wanted it to look like it was old, weathered, beaten up asphalt. And now that the painting is gonna start, I'd like to take a moment to thank the subscribers I have. I'm nearing 1500 and I'd love to see that number go up. It's a great way to support me here at Adventures in Crafting. Um, if we could hit 2,000 or even 2,500 subscribers, I think that would be amazing. Uh, there's enough of you out there that are returning viewers that aren't subscribed. And remember, subscribing is free. But did you know that you could help Adventures in Crafting? That's right. For as little as 10 cents a day, less than the cost of a cup of coffee a month, you too can help me record out of frame and also out of focus. You can watch as I paint things wrongly over and over again. You can help me by helping me get materials that I'll probably waste some of, if not all of at times. If you'd like to do that, then follow the link in the description. A public service announcement from Adventures in Crafting. Thank you. Speaking of mistakes I do, I use this blue because I thought it would look really good forgetting completely that I primed the whole thing in black and so the blue pretty much just looks like dark purple and almost evaporates in the surrounding of this thing so scrap that idea and go with this much 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 lighter crystal blue and of course put that on there so that way you can actually you know see it like that isn't that better isn't that a lot happier a color that actually stands out on your paint job. Of course, the alternating sections I paint in this light brown tan color. The vents there are the pour controllers from adult beverage bottles. I've been collecting those here and there, and I find they make great looking vents for the scale. They look like breather vents for the tops of building. Now, here's some pewter gray for the original roof of the structure. These are oftentimes a rubber or rubber-infused canvas, and a lot of times white or gray to keep the heat down. Here is literally a paint called Pavement that I use to, to paint the pavement. I know it's not original, but it is what it is. I'm using some straight-up white for the tile floor in the add-on office area, and this is... Uh, actually just EVA foam that I etched a pattern into. I use this kind of light green for the garage door, as well as the trim around the upper half of this, or upper floor of this building. Uh, I came back and did that off camera. 
Uh, here's some yellow for the bollards next to the garage door so people don't hit the wall when they're driving in and out of this garage with their, you know, souped up gang cars. And of course, they need to know how to get in, so I did a stippled paint job of stripes with an arrow for the asphalt area. Of course, the stippling is to make it look weathered and old like that. Now a little black paint to enhance the bollards because they always get bumped and dinged. So I don't know if you've seen them in real life, but the paint's never 100% there. So I didn't 100% put it there on these. Now the paint on the bricks is also chipping and flaking on the outside. It's exposed to the weather, so why wouldn't it be? So I'm going to take a little bit of very light gray and stipple it here and there on the outside as well. On the corners, where the primer maybe didn't hold as well, on the actual bricks themselves. They go all the way around and do this. I definitely think it adds a lot. Now this upper floor is more sci-fi, so I'm going to kind of overbrush the granny grating I used as the flooring material because, you know, nothing looks more like sci-fi than granny grating. Same material or same paint used on the actual breather vents there. And of course, black wash. And on the flat surfaces that would face up, you would dab it off so it looks like it gives it a pooling effect. Uh, it, it definitely looks a lot more natural. I don't know if you've ever spent time on a roof, but it does. Now to thank my patrons, HM Girl Potpourri and LAJ, without whom some of this content would not be made. And if you'd like to see your name there, follow the link in the description. I added some graffiti in the form of water transfer decals. Oh yeah, and an illuminated light. If you'd like to see more of things like that, I'd really like to know in the episode uh, comments. Um, it is literally a light pack from the dollar store. They came with little mini clothespins. They're mini fairy lights for hanging up pictures on. So I made a box out of uh, plastic card and used a translucent piece of blue that came in the multi-pack as well as a very thin piece of white and put a water slide decal right on top of it of a big old gun. And that stairwell I cut uselessly is where the battery pack is for this whole thing. So I guess it wasn't a huge waste of time. But there you go. Guns and more. Open for business. I 3D printed the guns. Did a basic, you know, speed paint wash, speed paint on those with a wash and some dry brushing. 3D printed the tables. Uh, some of the weapons are from uh, some dollar store action figure kits. And of course, uh, none of those are glued down in there, so you could move them around however you want. Also, I put in stairs. Here, I put some oil stains down on the floor, as well as uh, some 3D printed bits here and there. Stop sign, pirate flag. I mean, guys put all kinds of random stuff in their garages. And these are gun dealers slash car armorers, so they're going to do all kinds of fun stuff like that. You walk in and... There's your first example of the firearms you could buy. So there you go. Guns and more. Open for business. You should come down to our state-of-the-art facility and uh, get those armor plates installed. Maybe buy that new gun or upgrade your armor. Because it all happens at Guns and More. And remember their motto. Shoot first. As you can see, very playable interior and exterior. Overall, I think it was a very successful build. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the uh, comments. Well, thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.